It might appear as if the brain is shut off when you're sleeping. You lay down, you go to sleep, you wake up, as if nothing interesting has happened. Yet in reality, this is one of the busiest periods for your brain. It's fluctuating between different stages, producing different electrical signals, and plays a key role in memory and learning and even mental health. And all of these experiences together are produced what we call the sleep cycle. So in this video, we're going to break down the sleep cycle and examine what happens in the brain during a good night's sleep. Now the first thing to think about is, how do researchers know what happens in your brain while you're sleeping? Well, they use a device primarily called an electroencephalogram, also known, much easier, as an EEG. And for an EEG, you're going to have metal discs placed on your scalp or electrodes that record the electrical activity in your brain. And it's going to put them on a computer screen in the form of a brainwave. Okay? So as we talk about each stage, we're going to think about all the waves that occur and how it goes from awake through a good night's sleep and then we wake up. So let's start with this. You're awake, you're alert, you're focused on me, you're trying to learn about sleep, right? What would an EEG look like in your head? Well, right now, on a computer screen, it would produce what we call beta waves. What do you notice about this wave? I notice it's high frequency, low amplitude. Frequency is the space between waves, so the peaks are close together, and amplitude is how high it is, so it's very low amplitude, okay? This shows me you're alert, you're focused, and you're awake, right? But it's been a long day, you're tired, right? And you start to drift off, right? Our eyes are closing, our breathing kind of been, uh, slows down, our heartbeat slows down, and all of a sudden, right, think about an EEG. It's gonna produce little lower waves, like not as frequent, what is called theta waves, okay? In other words, how do I know you've entered stage one sleep, right? And we'll color code this as stage one. Um, two reasons. One, we see theta waves, but also what we know about the description. In non-REM one, we consider this light sleep, okay? Do you ever go to sleep and you're like, was I sleeping? Was I not sleeping, right? It's so light, we don't even know whether we're sleeping or not. It's easy to wake up. And what's also occurring is a big phrase called hypnagogic, what is it? Hypnagogic sensations, okay? These are bizarre hallucinatory experiences. So people might hear voices, right? Auditory things that are not there. Uh, they might visually see things that aren't there, shapes or flashes of light, or they feel like they're falling, right? And they just jerk up and wake up. So how do I know you've entered stage one? I'm gonna see theta waves on EEG, and I know you might experience hypnagogic sensations. Okay, after about 10 to 15 more minutes, what's gonna happen? You're gonna drift off into what we call stage two, right here. Okay, we're color coding it so it's nice and easy to see. Now, I'm gonna use the phrases non-REM and REM. We'll understand that in a little bit. All we need to think about is stages in order, one, two, and three. On EEG, what I'm seeing is also theta waves, but I'm gonna see interesting activity, okay? It almost looks like a heartbeat, okay? It's something like this, okay? What are these? These brief bursts of activity are called, right into them together, sleep spindles, okay? These bursts of activity, okay? Sleep spindles. And what I also see are these little kind of like up high amplitude and then they drop down. These are called K complexes, okay? So we have theta waves with brief birth activity, sleep spindles, and what is called K complexes, okay? And the theory is, at least one of the theories of why these kind of bursts of activity occur, is because you have all this stimuli coming in when you're sleeping, sights and sounds, right? But your brain is asleep. And so your RES, reticular activating system, and your thalamus, we'll talk about this in another video, are trying to block out all this information to keep you asleep. So maybe that's why those bursts of activity occur. So how do I know I've entered stage two? I have theta waves with brief bursts of sleep spindles and K complexes. All right, so what happens after that? On EEG, it's gonna show these really high amplitude waves, right? Almost looks like waves in the ocean. We go from beta to theta, all the way to what we call delta waves. This is considered deep sleep, right? It's so deep that this is kind of where you wake up groggy, disoriented, it's really hard to wake up. So what do we know about non-REM stage three? We know it's considered deep sleep, okay, the deepest of sleeps, um, or I'll put in parentheses, slow wave sleep, okay? Slow wave because as you see with these delta waves, right, they're very low frequency, right? They're very spread apart. So we have delta waves, uh, deep sleep, okay? What else do we know uh, about this stage? Our vital signs drop, okay? 
So what do I mean by our vital signs drop? Well, this is where our heartbeat slows down much and our breathing slows down and our blood pressure, our muscles are very, very relaxed. So the body's kind of getting ready for that deep, deep, deep sleep. Other things that happen, we have what we call physical restoration. Okay, the restoration phase. Okay, your body repairs itself during deep sleep. Growth hormones are released. Your immune system is working. You have tissue repair. So when your body is not feeling good, this is the stage of sleep in which you're going to really repair the body. Okay? All right. And lastly in the stage, uh, we often see, because you can still move, sleep disorders or parasomnias. Okay? So sleepwalking typically occurs in non-REM3 or night terrors typically occur in the sleep. So this is a really important stage of sleep. And let's kind of visualize it here. We have all this deep sleep down here. We're going to kind of follow this trace right here. Okay. All right. So what happens after that? We've gone through non-REM one and two and three. We're going to go back up, right? Remember it's a cycle. We kind of do this kind of up and down, up and down. So what do we do? We return to non-REM two. In fact, we spend most of our sleep in non-REM two. Uh, we're going to return to non-REM one. And right before we wake up, you know what happens? Something amazing happens. What happens is, rapid eye movement known as REM sleep. Okay. So what is REM sleep? Okay. First, I'm going to write REM here in my pink. Okay. And here's my REM phase. Um, this is a discovery that when you are sleeping at certain times of the night, your eyes are moving back and forth on your eyelids. No, you're not possessed. What it tells us is a few things. Number one, it tells us you are dreaming. So if you wake somebody up during rapid eye movement, they'll recall these very, very vivid dreams. Okay. We also know that the muscles are paralyzed um, and also known instead of paralysis, we'll call it muscle atonia. Okay. So your muscles don't work. So if you ever wake up and you're like, I can't move my body, you've probably woken up during REM sleep. Um, and because your muscles don't work, another phrase for REM sleep is paradoxical sleep. Ooh, what is paradoxical? Paradoxical means a contradiction. So why is a contradiction? because your mind is active, but your body is inactive, right? Your mind is, is doing a lot. It almost looks like, I'll do it here. It almost looks like beta waves on an EEG. Okay. So your brain sometimes doesn't know the difference between dreaming and wakefulness. So we have a uh, active mind, active mind, but our body can't move. Our body is paralyzed. All right. And lastly, research has shown that this is a vital phase for a lot of things, specifically memory consolidation. Okay, consolidation. Okay, so we're able to store four memories in the sleep, specifically procedural and emotional memories. Now, yes, there's some memory consolidation in stage two as well, but it's important for memory, learning, creativity, problem solving. This is a very, very important phase. So when we talk about REM and non-REM, here's what you got to think about. There's essentially two phases of sleep. Your eyes are moving rapidly, that's REM, or your eyes are not moving rapidly. The two phases of sleep. We have no rapid eye movement, and then we have rapid eye movement. So one, two, and three are non-REM, and then we have REM. All right, so what happens after this? We're going to repeat the cycle again, right? We go back to non-REM one. We go back to non-REM two. Right? You know how this works, non-REM two. Um, think about what happens to each one also as I go down. So we have sleep spindles and gay complexes. And then we go to what we call deep sleep, slow wave sleep, right? I'm groggy, I'm disoriented right here. And what happens? We go back up. Remember, this cycle is going to continue throughout the night. And one thing I do want to show you as we kind of head up here to REM sleep um, is that REM is going to occur again. Okay. It occurs about three to four times in the night. So here's my nice REM stage. Um, but what also could happen is people wake up. So maybe on an EEG, you don't even realize it, um, but you woke up, right? Just for a very, very brief moment, you woke up. Okay. What happens then? We go back to non-REM one. What happens? We go back to non-REM two. You know how this works. And then we go back to deep sleep. And let's just kind of repeat this cycle over and over. And then we wake up. Okay. And even though we wake up, we're like, oh, that was just a boring night's sleep. Look at all the activity. Look at all the different brain waves. Right? Look at all the different things and, and behavioral and psychological things were happening during a typical night's sleep.
Now, there's three things I want you to remember um, that deal with the sleep cycle that are really, really important. The first one is, how often does the sleep cycle occur? In other words, from REM to REM. Well, this is average, um, but on average, um, we'll do a little drawing from peak to peak, um, every REM cycle lasts about 90 minutes. Okay, so about every hour and a half, we go through a REM cycle. That's number one. Number two is, we get less and less deep sleep as the night goes on. So we have a lot of deep sleep down here, and eventually, as we kind of curl up here, we run out of deep sleep. Why? Because we're getting ready to wake up, right? We don't want to wake up at groggy and disoriented. We're getting ready for sleep. And the third thing is we get more REM sleep as the night goes on. So we get a little bit of REM, and by the end of the night, we have a lot of REM. Okay, so every 90 minutes we go through the cycle, um, we get less deep sleep as the night continues, and we increase REM frequency during the night. This is the sleep cycle. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, leave a comment below. Get good sleep tonight. I'll see you next time.